So a post-purchase flow is a sequence of emails aiming at eliminating buyer's remorse, educating the customers, reducing returns, and last but not the least, increasing your retention. If you want to achieve all of those, these are the five touch points you need to have in your post-purchase flow. First email is a simple order confirmation email. Second email, eliminate buyer's remorse by building excitement about the product and minimize returns. Third email, product education. Make sure that your customers are using the product in the correct manner. Fourth email, review request. Make sure that after the customers have been introduced to your product, they've received it and they have to use it, they leave a nice review that can later on be used as a social proof. The last email, time-sensitive offer for a cross-sell. After your customers are happy with the product, make sure that you introduce to other products that might fit to the, to the one that they just purchased. A post-purchase flow is a great opportunity for you to introduce your whole brand to your fresh customer, but make sure that you use the right timing for it. So in my opinion, there are two ways you can do it. An immediate bounce back with a great offer, with a time sensitive offer as an upsell or a cross sell for the first purchase, or as a last email in your post-purchase sequence, again, with a time sensitive offer and introduce your customers to a different cross sell or an upsell. So one of the challenges that most D2C brands face when it comes to post-purchase flows is timing and frequency. You wonder, when should I send the first email? What email should I send and where? Well, these questions don't have a one-size-fits-all answer. And you need to look at um, your brand and see what fits for it. But as a guidance, think about the following elements. When does your customer receive the products? How long does the uh, delivery take? Do you ship internationally or uh, only domestically? This is also very important because if you're later on in the flow gonna send review request flows and you have them timed on for domestic uh, deliveries, some international customers might be angry because you're asking for reviews when they haven't even received the product. Okay. So another challenge that D2C brands face when it comes to post-purchase flows is consistency across channels. They don't put a lot of effort into all channels. Um, therefore, people are confused. They don't recognize the emails. They don't know when and why they received it. So make sure that you actually put in the effort and time to use the content that you use across all of your channels into emails or SMSs as well. Not only when it comes to visuals, but also the tone of voice is very important. So the customers can actually recognize and implement that tone of voice in their brain. The third challenge most D2C brands face when it comes to post-purchase flows is personalization. The overthinking, they have thousands of thousands of SKUs, hundreds of collections, and they want to personalize all that in the post-purchase flow. Well, that might be cumbersome because if you're a big brand that has thousands of SKUs, the effort that needs to be put into creating that um, kind of post-purchase flow is not worth it. So instead, try to make it more generic. If you have a hero product or multiple hero products, and most stores have them, use those to personalize your flow. But for the other products or for the other collections, Make sure that you use a generic verbiage to not lose resources. When creating content for a post-purchase flow, make sure that you think about the customer first. For example, you need to teach your customers when they should be expecting results from your product. Because if a customer expects results from day one after using your product, but your product only shows results after two weeks, then you're gonna have some angry customers, you're gonna get bad reviews, then retention is gonna go down. So make sure that you think about the customer and you teach them when they should expect the results from your product. Secondly, make sure that you teach people how to use the product. Some products might have simple usage, right? You might think because you are the business owner, 
But for the regular people, they don't know exactly how to use it, especially if it's the first time they purchase it. Therefore, have some instructional videos and redirect people back to a landing page on your website and teach them how to use the product correctly. Let's say you're working for a skincare brand. These are the emails, or this is how you should think about when it comes to a post-purchase flow for a skincare brand. So first email that applies to everyone, we have order confirmation. Simple email, transactional, Make sure you add all the details related to the invoice and when people can expect their product along with the tracking URL. The second email that you should have is around eliminating bias remorse. Try to build excitement about the product, about the results that people can see by using the product and also introduce or add the FAQs just to minimize returns. The third email, it's around product education and how to use the product. It's very important if you're a skincare brand to deliver this information to your customers so they can actually use the product correctly and make sure that they get the results they desire. Otherwise, it's just gonna result in more returns and more bad reviews. The fourth email, obviously you want to get a more social proof. You want your product to stand out from your competition and spread the voice out. So you should definitely add a review email. Another email that you should have in your post-purchase if you're a skincare brand is social media gathering. You want to create a community around the brand. You want people to share the results. Therefore, introduce people to your social media, whether you're using Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Redirect people back to social media, tell them about it, and encourage them to tag you over there. Therefore, this is just free social proof. Last email that you want to have in your post-purchase flow is a time-sensitive cross-sell. Let's say they purchase SPF. Well, the next thing that you can do is add a mask or conditioner. Make sure that you introduce customers to all products that you have that also go well with their initial purchase. When thinking about the timing between your post-purchase emails, there isn't actually a one size fits all. So you have to think about your delivery times. So we have the first email or the confirmation that goes out immediately, but then you have eliminating virus remorse email. That should go out three, four days after the initial email. And that's between the time they place the order and the time they receive their product. So you want to build that expectancy, but also touch on the fact that they shouldn't be afraid about using the product. They shouldn't be afraid about the results that they can get from your product. Next, we have product education. This should be around the time they receive the product. By the time they receive the product, they should already know how to use it and how to get the best results. Then of course we have the review request email. That email should go out a few days after the customer received the product. Depending of course on what products you sell, if you're a skincare brand, of course you want to wait a few days, maybe one week after the customer got the product and started using it just to make sure that they have actually started seeing results. If you are a clothing brand, of course, you can set that two, three days after the customer received the product because they have already had the chance to wear the product and to post it on social media. And the last email, we have the time sensitive offer that can be sent a few days, three, four days after the review request email. When it comes to the cross sale email with the time sensitive offer, Make sure that you exclude anyone who left a bad review previously. Otherwise, you're just going to get angry customers because you send them an offer for a product that they don't actually want or from a brand. Maybe they're trusting you. It's not there anymore. So you don't want to make them angrier. When it comes to encouraging people to view your social media accounts, you can send that email after the review request. You make sure that they actually have enjoyed the product, they like the product, 
or maybe the results they got from it already. And you want them to boast them about it on social media. So share your Instagram, share your TikTok, and encourage them to tag you over there, especially if they left a positive review. Tip for the social media email, you can exclude bad reviews from the previous email. Because if someone left a negative review on the website, you don't want them to have the same feeling and come with the same vibe on social media and leave the same bad remarks about the product or about the brand. Okay, so if you're wondering how to create a post purchase in Clavio, get your hands dirty and actually create it from the ground, here are a few tips. So we're gonna start with the trigger. Depending on your brand, depending on the software you use, and depending what type of email your first email is going to be, we're going to use Waterman Shipment Delivered. In our case, we're using Waterman as a tracking app. And this is going to be our trigger for the flow. But if you don't have a tracking app, you're going to use a Shopify metric, maybe placed order or order fulfilled, depending on the purpose of your first email. In our case, our first email in this flow is not an order confirmation. So we're going to skip that and we want people to receive this email, the first email, when the shipment has been delivered. Okay. Now, secondly, we want to make sure that this post-purchase flow excludes people from your re regular campaigns. Why? Because if you're going to email people on a regular basis while receiving emails from a post-purchase flow, then you're diluting the goal of this flow, which is retention, educating the customer, and making sure that they know how to use the product. So you want to create the profile property and update everyone who goes through this flow. And later on, I'm going to show you how to exclude them. Moving on, we have the first email, how to use the product. This is being sent one day after the order has been delivered. So the first email talks about how to use the products. Of course, if you have lots of products, lots of SKUs, you don't have the capacity for production to actually personalize the entire flow based on those products. So what you can do in instead, you can create a landing page on your website and redirect people from Clavio with a generic email. In our case, we tell people, hey, this is how you can you should use the products. And we redirect, we redirect people back to the website. A second email sent one day after how to use the product is around expectations and regular usage. We teach people when they should be seeing results from our products because again, if they expect results within the first two days of usage, but the product will actually give results only two day, only two weeks after using the product, then you're gonna get angry customers. So within this email, we build expectations. In this case, dry under 30 days. So in the second email, we build expectation. We teach people when they should be seeing results from the product and how regularly they should be using the product for that. Make sure that within this email, you offer every possible information that a customer would need for your product. For example, here we say results within one week of regular use. That information is important because if someone only uses the product twice a week or three times a week when they are supposed to use it, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, they won't see results. You want to make sure that you give that information to people. The third email is about enhancing and building trust on your brand. You want to show people what the product can do and what the brand is about. This email is being sent one day after the second one. This email highlights product USPs and highlights why our product is going to show results. The fourth email 
in the post purchase is a cross sell with a time sensitive offer that is being sent one day after the last email. So you want to use scarcity and urgency in your email to make sure that people will drive. And these are the four emails that you should have in your, in your post purchase flow.